we grow about 12 different varieties of raspberries. We have about six that are considered primal cane and about six that are called floricane. Primal cane raspberries, the cane grows up from the ground, produces flowers and fruit all in one year. They tend to be all your later varieties. The very earliest primal cane varieties, you wouldn't get berries until late in July. Then you have floricane varieties. They grow a cane the first year vegetatively, and then the following year that same cane puts out laterals and gets flowers and fruit the second year. So obviously with the two different kinds, there's two different management practice. The, the primocanes, the ones you that do it all in one year, are really easy. And so obviously you say, well, geez, that's the only kind you should grow. And that, as a homeowner or something, that makes a ton of sense because they're much less labor. As a U-Pick farm, the disadvantage is, is they're all later in the season because they have to grow the entire plant and the fruit all in one year. So you wouldn't have any raspberries to pick in the early summer. Pretty much the planting and cultivation and irrigation and fertility and stuff are pretty similar to both the primocane and the floricane. It's just the different pruning treatments that you do on them. Most nurseries are going to tell you, and it seems to be bearing out, that around six, eight years is a, is a typical lifespan, at which point it's probably time to, to plow them under and replace them. The market for the crops continue to grow. So we've been planting both kinds of raspberries now for going on 10 years. Every year we're planting about a thousand new raspberry plants of one variety or another. We've tried to pick varieties that grow well and meet our schedule that don't need a lot of trellising. The trellis again is another huge investment in infrastructure and a lot of work to keep it up. Raspberries are one of those tricky crops in that they want really, really well-drained soil. They won't tolerate having wet feet at all. They have a fairly shallow root system. So it's that paradox. They want really well-drained soil, but that they have to have lots of moisture. They want to have tons of organic matter and they need lots of nitrogen. You can't plant them real deep. They have to be planted quite shallow. Ideal situation with planting the raspberries as early as we possibly can. I mean, ideally, those you want to be plowing them right into almost muddy soil so the soil gets compacted around the root system before it dries out and they have a lot of nice cool wet weather to grow. Both varieties get planted the same way. We get dormant bare root raspberry plants, what looks like basically a stick with a big huge fibrous root system on it. We use agrigel planting gel, which are microscopic sponges that absorb a huge quantity of water. We dip the plants in that, it coats them with that gel. That gel has a great affinity for water and pulls it into the plant roots, releases water to the roots when they need it. That initial couple of weeks after you transplant them, it keeps the, the plants alive and keeps them hydrated until they get a chance to grow new root hairs and really reach out into the soil and get a big root system. The planter we use for the raspberries is just something that I built. We actually use the same planter to plant bare root fruit trees. And it's just a big cultivator point that I welded a box behind it so that it opens up a trench about six inches wide. For fruit trees, we, we set it right in the ground about a foot deep. And for the raspberries, we try to open up a trench that's three, four inches deep at the most. And then the plants, whether they're trees or raspberry bushes or asparagus crowns, are by hand set into that trench. And then behind it, there's a pair of wheels that have quite a bit of down pressure on them that squeeze that trench back closed again, push the dirt back around it. It's really primitive. It takes a fair amount of physical effort to do it. You have to walk back through and with your feet, cover some of the plants up. It does 90, 95% of the work. So compared to going out there with a shovel and planting them or something, it's a, a big boom. Once the raspberries are set in the ground and covered up with dirt really well, we immediately go ahead and get our drip irrigation on them so that we can keep them watered really well. Uh, and then I use the same straw chopper that I blow straw on my strawberry plants. It's a big round bale chopper. We go through and blow any sort of mulch hay or straw that I have a really thick layer right over top of that row on a strip. And that will hold the moisture in during that first growing season, which is really critical. 
the straw and the raspberries is weed control. And over the first year's time, that mulch breaks down and creates a lot of organic matter for those plants to establish a big, huge root system and a lot of suckers to give you better growth the following year. Because the quicker you can establish a really dense, healthy planting of canes, you know, the better the plant's going to be able to outcompete with weeds and the more vigorous it's going to be and the sooner you're going to have a, a crop to harvest. The third step I do is plant dwarf grass. Most of the varieties are called, you know, shortcut or orchard grass. They'll only grow about six, eight inches tall. You want to have something growing there for people to walk on and to keep it from being muddy. And more importantly, you want something that's going to outcompete the weeds. I really like the dwarf grass. When you do mow, it takes a lot less horsepower and you have to do a lot less often versus if you just let anything grow there or if you grow typical lawn grass or some variety of hay, it's going to take a lot more fuel and horsepower to mow it. With raspberries, we're investing all this money in plant material. You want to put it in a piece of ground that you're going to have the least amount of weed competition. You're going to want to have really high levels of fertility starting out and organic matter. That first year, if they don't have a lot of stress, that planting will, will mature really quickly and be really productive and it'll last a really long time. If you start that curve off right, it just will follow through for the whole life of the planting to reach their peak potential.